Shumai Croeso, hello and welcome to the Bluebird's Nest. Neath Aradair Glacian. Special offer from our sponsor to begin with then. So dragonbet.co.uk. Um, there is a proud to be Welsh day of jump racing at Force Last Racecourse coming up on Sunday, 5th of March. Dragonbet are looking to give away some free tickets and a free £20 uh, website bet. Access to the Dragons Lounge as well. So for all followers of Half of West County who have signed up to dragonbet.co.uk, simply visit their uh, social media channels, so Twitter and Instagram, uh, to find out more. But as always, please gamble aware, please gamble responsibly. As you can see, episode 23, delighted to welcome first team manager, Mr. Tony Panak. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening. Or morning. So, well, or... Stay welcome. It's a little bit of a, a welcome back. You popped on with us uh, Christmas time for the special uh, fan voted mid season awards, but a chance to really uh, give a give an insight into your playing and managerial career for supporters of the club. There's a long list of clubs and achievements. Uh, I've done my research. Wikipedia's helped me no end. Uh, notably, Stockport, Wigan Athletic. Over 230 appearances for Yeovil, then on to Rushton and Diamonds, and uh, a season at Farnborough that we'll we'll focus on a little bit later as well. But goalkeeping, where did where did that all start? And we we were always a goalkeeper, and and how did Stockport come about? And yeah, my dad was a goalkeeper. He played like at Swansea Senior League and a bit of Welsh League as well. So that's where that came from, really, as a, as a nipper. Um, and probably got shoved in goals in the back garden by my brother to for him to smash balls at me. So that's where it, that's where it started. I had little little spells where I played out as well. I was I played out for the, the Swans in the Milk Cup in Northern Ireland, fair enough. And I was under 17s back in the late eighties. Um, but then I, I I got back into goalkeeping again then, and um, yeah, and went from there. Yeah, the Stockport thing. It was I got in the Welsh Colleges team, same team as. Um, Lucas and Harry have been in recently. And then, then they picked a British team then. And I got picked. And I was captain of the British team. And try and cut it short. The physio for the England team, we beat England 2-1 at the Vetch. And then they picked the British team. The physio for the England team was the physio for the British team. But he was also Morecambe's physio. They were in the conference then. And Dave Jones, the old Cardiff Southampton manager, was leaving Morecambe to go to Stockport as um, head of youth stroke first team coach. So he told Dave about me. Dave told Stockport. I went up for a trial. I played a game in the old combination league or the Pontins League, I think up north it was, yeah, against Peterborough. And they offered me a contract soon after the game. A bit of a shock because I was going away to university uh, in a month or so. But uh, they offered me a contract and I, I, I said, yeah. And went there. Um, and in that first season, went on loan to Wigan, who were in Division 3, Stockport in Division 4. I went on loan to Wigan. Um, Made my debut there, played in the FA Cup against Coventry, my debut and a replay, and then two more league games and broke my thumb, and that was the end of that one then. But then they bought me for the princely sum of, I think it was £5,000 at the end of the season then, Wigan. Stockport sold me, got rid of me for five grand to stop to Wigan. I signed a three-year contract at Wigan. Fair play. So what, what age were you going up to Stockport? Uh, 19. I was 19 when I made my debut against Coventry in the Cup, yeah. Yeah, I was 19. Yeah. To go from South Wales up to Stockport and well, then down to Yeovil, you, you certainly got the, the mileage in there. It was um, key and divine of uh, that football drawing uh, recently unearthed your testimonial program. So, when you went down to Yeovil, I think you were there for a, a good number six or seven years down there. Your testimonial program, uh, where you face Southampton again, the link with Dave Jones, I think he was in charge just at the end there at Southampton. We've spoken about that. Uh, off camera and, and recently Leticia, Cash Lul, Kevin Davis, mm -hmm. a young James Beatty. What, what what was that like then playing against those stars? Yeah, Yeovil, Yeovil was a great period for me. I'd, I'd gone from Wigan to Hereford, um, Hereford in League Two, and I didn't I didn't have a great time there. I started the season number one, um, got sent off in a game and lost my place in the team for months. Then. And when I came back of the team, I was horrendous. I had an absolute shocker. So I rightly got dropped. I think. Um, <laughs> Seven one away at uh, Mansfield on Boxing Day, put an end to my <laughs> spelling. Goal for very good. Uh, um, so the end of the season, I'd, I'd had a, I'd had enough really of full time. For I didn't get on with the manager. We we didn't get on at all, which happens. So I decided to drop out of full time football, and and 
I played against Yeovil in a, in a reserve match again, fair enough, reserves, and uh, they they asked me to go down. So I actually went down and played in a testimonial as like a, a trial game, and I was against Southampton. And right. again, they offered me a contract so after the game, so I spent six years there. Um, yeah, it was a great period. I think I, you know, I, 311 games I played for Yeovil in all competitions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still in the, in the all time top 10 appearance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a great period, and the testimonial um, was was something special to be awarded that really. And like I said, Dave Jones organised all that for me. He was Southampton manager, but then he left in the summer, and Glenn Hoddle took over. But uh, they they brought a full team, and we used it as a as a proper pre season match. They went full tilt. My brother started the only only sort of guest I had was my brother, and he started the first ten. He had the first fifteen minutes. <laughs> He scored after about 60 seconds. Yeah, he had an hell of a volley from about 40 yards out the touchline, just went over the bar. And then um, and then, then he got he, he had to come off then. And then we, <laughs> but it was nice oh, for the pitch up game as well. Though. Yeah, well, up until that point in your career, I think that, that was would have been the, the probably the toughest opponents, toughest looking squad anyway. But an infamous FA Cup draw. Um in early spring, I think it was in two thousand and three, potentially two thousand and four. Is that right? Um, against Arsenal. Well, no, that would have been earlier than that. Well, I think it would have been. It might have been two thousand two. I left Rushton. I went there. Yeah, was it two thousand two or two thousand three? It was a year after the Invincibles. It was basically the Invincibles team, really. I was going to say, well, I've spent a good 15, 20 minutes watching the highlights on YouTube. It's it's worth a watch for anybody who's who's interested. Um. Farnborough, so you had a period of time with Farnborough. They they drew Arsenal at home, I think, originally was, was the draw, but they opted to play it at Highbury in front yes. of a, a, well, 35,000 uh, sellout crowd. Will Dodd, Bergkamp, Perez, I think Saul Campbell hit the first goal. Yeah. It, it's it's a great what you, you did as a team and yourself. I think the commentator mentions great save, Penna, great save the, so many times. You went down to ten men after about half an hour as well. So just to yeah, make no. it <laughs> just to make it that little bit more difficult. But what was that like? A high breathe thirty five thousand. Must have been incredible. Yeah, it, it was a strange run for us really, because in the in the, the round before, uh we drew Darlington away. We were obviously a league club, we were a conference club. We beat Darlington away, I think we beat them two nil on a on a snow covered pitch with an orange ball and everything. And then um I remember I was driving to training on the Monday afternoon. We were trained late on a Monday in Farnborough, and I'd moved back to Swansea then. I was just on the seven bridge and the draw back in then. The draw was to be on, didn't it? Radio 2 on a, on a Monday. <laughs> and, and, and out the draw came Farnborough Town versus Arsenal. I was like, wow. But it, that was the last game to ever get changed. The, the FA stopped that then after that. They weren't allowed to swap games, obviously. We would have probably had sold the ground out 6,000, but the... The ground back then at Farnborough wasn't the best. They've, they've, they've redeveloped it quite a lot now. It's, it's a lot nicer. Um, but the owner, the manager was the owner of the club as well. Very successful businessman. I, I won't go into any more detail about him. Um, we switched the game, played Arsenal. The two weeks leading up to it were mental. We um, we like travelled the country. We spent the day at Man United because he was a massive Alex Ferguson fan, the manager. And he met him on holidays once and and uh, got in touch with them. So we went up there, watched them train, then trained on the training pitch after them. And then we played Halifax away on the Saturday and on the Friday, we went to Newcastle, spent the day with Sir Bobby Robson at Newcastle and watching watching them train. And we played the game on the Saturday. Then we flew to La Manga and spent a week in La Manga before the Arsenal game. And to be fair to him, you know, money wasn't an option. He, he did everything by the book and did everything best for us. But um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a strange lead up to the game. We were glad when it's done. But it's not often, uh, as a keeper, you let five in and you just didn't want the whistle to blow. Like, I just wanted the game to keep going and keep going. It, it was, yeah, it was, it was something special to be part of. Yeah, well, you know, you, you did really well. I know conceding five sounds, you know, oh, they, they've been armoured, but it could have been so, so much more. Like you said, a team full of invincibles and things like that. But end of the game then, there's a clip at the end of the, the 15, 20 minute footage, uh, highlight reel I saw. Did, did you swap shirts with anyone? Seaman was sub that day. He didn't play. I played against him the year before. Played against them for Russian and Diamonds in a, in a preseason friendly. Um, and I didn't get his shirt that day. I got um, Alex Man- Manninger. Yeah. 
it was never had his shirt that day. So Seaman was sub, but our goalkeeper coach knew him and uh, he pulled him beforehand. So when I came off the pitch, he was waiting for me in the tunnel. He gave me his shirt and he gave me his gloves. But I give his I give the gloves to our number two keeper. He was a massive Seaman fan, so uh, I give I give them to the young lad. And uh, it was a great day. A bus yeah. a bus full of family and friends came up from back home and. I remember warming up. We had the, we were warming up at the clock end, and they weren't there. And I was like, well, I wondered where they were, and oh, I'm not going to look at my phone or anything then. And then when I came out for the start of the game, a big big Welsh flag went up behind the goal, so I knew they were there then. So uh, yeah, it was a great day, great day for the family and my mates. Yeah, incredible, fair play. You you then came back to Wales then, um, joining Kamal then. I remember as a as a youngster in West Wales, a couple of times watching you uh, turn out in what would have been the League of Wales back then. Um, not a bad first year at uh, at Richmond Park as well. Team of the year for the whole league. You were selected uh, as the goalkeeper. I, I think I'm right in saying, going off uh, the the Wikipedia record um, history sort of timeline, you took your first steps into management at the end of that year with the semi pro team. Yeah, it was a little bit later. I I had all, three years at Carmarthen. Um, it was a good it was a good period really. Um, we did we did quite well. We Got to the final of the Welsh Cup, mm. losing at TNS. So but back then the rule was if you got to the final and and they'd already won the league, you qualify for Europe. So we, we played in Europe with Carmarthen as well, which were, which was a great experience playing the UEFA Cup. Uh, then the following season, I left and I went to Newport. Um, so I had about the last thirty games of the season for Newport in the Conference South. Um, started the next season, broke my leg up at Talbot. Um, so it was in that season when I broke my leg. Really, I was still goalkeeper coach at the Swans, but you know my leg break was 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 a big blow. Obviously, it stopped me doing my job at Swansea as well as missing out on playing. So the semi pro job came up, and I spoke to everybody who I was sort of working with at the time, working for the FAW and with the Swans, and also um, uh, Newport, and, and they were really supportive. And I applied for it, never expected to get it, and. Um, yeah, I got down to the last three. It was me, Mark Jones, and Oshan Rob Osh and Roberts in the last three. And uh, remember when I got it? I remember Osh phoned me straight after he passed me on my A license about six months before. You had to have an A license to have, have the job. And he said, "I'm sorry, I passed you on the A license now." But <laughs> Osh has done all right for himself anyway, hasn't he? So uh, you know, I don't think that held him back at all. Him not getting that job, but. Yeah, I did it for two years. It was it was really good. I, I played for the semi pros. I was uh, seven caps for them. But then to be uh, to look after the group and manage it, it was it was really good and something I really enjoyed doing. And I, I only stopped it because I got the full time um, academy manager's job at Swansea. Then, so I obviously couldn't do that, and uh, so I stepped down after the two years. Yeah, any uh, any sort of Hall of Famers with the Welsh Premier that uh, you remember selecting in that team? In my team, we were really young. Um, you know, I play. I, obviously, I played with I went to the Jones and. Uh, Ben Davis, um, went, Ben went on and played for Derby. He's Grimsby assistant manager now. Um, a lot of the TNS boys, you know, people like um, Gary Lloyd and Yorkie, all those boys from Barry when Barry were flying. They they they, they were a, they were a great bunch to to play with. Um, Scott Rusko, TNS, Steve Evans. You know, we, we had a great group. We, we won it a couple of times. Uh, we went up in Scotland. Tony, me and Tony Roberts were the goalkeepers that year. And um, it was always a, a really good group to be part of, and people were, people were were desperate to be in the group. So when I had to pick a squad and leave a few out, especially ones who I played with, it, it, it wasn't easy. They weren't easy phone calls to make, but um, it was part and parcel of being a manager, I think. But um, no, I had really good times doing. That. I really enjoyed it. It's a shame that that tournament doesn't doesn't carry on, you know, um, because you know, I, I played in it four times. I played. No, we played Ireland year for enough that one year, but it was in Wales. We played England at Merthyr and Scotland at Carmarthen, and we couldn't win. So then the last game, Ken's was here. Ken's, and Ken's obviously Harvey West goalkeeper. So Ken's played the game against Ireland then. So yeah, I you know I, I played with some great lads and spent plenty of time with with Robbo and Lee Kendall as well. So you know, good friends of mine. Time. You mentioned the, the Swansea job then. So you appointed director of youth football, I think five successful years there at the Swans before heading up north to the Tigers Academy at Hull City, where, well, overall you spent eight years uh, sort of leading the academy and also becoming part of the first team staff. Yeah. Um, there's some, over that period of sort of 13 years there, there's some big name, household names of managers who you must have worked alongside. 
notably Martinez at Swansea, Laudrup, Steve Bruce, Nigel Adkins, I think, and uh, and well, certainly Grant McCann, who you you sort of uh, coach with for your League One title winning success. Is there any specifics, like traits or habits that that you picked up from any of those managers who you'd say I do that because of him or? Or sort of things again, perhaps who you you've seen and you didn't like and and don't put into your practice. Uh, yeah, it's, I've been really fortunate. You know, when, when I first went to Swansea as goalkeeper coach, you know, I did three years there with Kenny Jacket, and Kenny Kenny was really important to to my development at that time. I was going through my A license and seeing somebody coach the way he coached day in day out was was um, was a massive help for me. Him and Kevin Nugent, Colin Pasco. Um, then, then I took the academy job and and. Roberto had left and come back. He was my first manager, and Robbie left. You know, Rob, Roberto um, and um, Brendan were massive for us. You know, for the the academy. You know, they they Roberto loved the club. You know, he played for the club for so long, and Brendan had had spent so much time at Chelsea's academy as well. You know, he, he understood what we needed to do and 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 the culture of the club and 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 the people. So so those two were massive. You know. Very similar in terms of their style of play as well. So, you know, that's the way we, we were brought up at Swansea, that through all the age groups. So I like to think, you know, although we don't play 4-3-3 now at the moment at the club, you know, it is one system that I will use. And off the back of watching Roberto and, and Brendan as much as I did, then uh, I'd like to hope I've picked up, you know, some of the things, you know, a lot of the sessions we do, all coaches are thieves, you know, we just steal sessions off other people and we just tinker them to suit us and, and what we need at the time, and you know, the, a lot of the stuff that Jazz would see us do here, yeah, you know, Jazz would have done in Roberto a long, long time ago on Brendan. So, you know, I was fortunate to work with those. You know, they, they work ethic, the amount of hours they spent, you know, was remarkable. You know, Roberto, you'd, you'd see his light on in the office at the, at the Liberty Stadium. I would have gone midnight, Roberto hardly slept. You know, he lived and breathed football. I'm not saying other managers don't. But he, he really was, you know, it was, it was, he'd come from Chester, I think Roberto had. And, you know, he, because the club meant so much to him, I just think he put everything into it. And, um, you know, when he left, he left and he had a bit of stick for that. You know, he's had a great career. Um, the foreign manager, the Swans, he didn't really spend as much time with them. Didn't didn't get to, to spend much time with Paulo Sosa or Michael, really. Um, they they helped the academy and did whatever, or anything they needed support with, they, they, they supported us. But in terms of, Working with them as close as I did with with uh, Roberto and Brendan, it, it it wasn't as close a relationship as those. And then I was, obviously I went to Hull. I remember going to Hull just for the interview because I'd never met Steve Bruce and um, spent half hour with him and came out of the room thinking, oh, I definitely want this job. And I was fortunate enough to get offered it. I think I'd eat three interviews at Hull in the end. Um, but yeah, Steve Steve is exactly as you see him. You know, he's uh, firm but straight. Um, uh, good in the dressing room, players respect him. I think he, he, you know, he earns that respect from the career he had and, and the career he's had as a manager. You know, he's done over a thousand games as a manager, and he's somebody that um, I looked up to a lot. And his staff, he, he's got a staff who's worked with him everywhere. Really, Steve Agnew, McFeelan came in with him. Um, Steve Clements, Gary Walsh. You know, he's got he's got people around him that he, that know him inside out, and that's why they always work together. All the clubs that they've worked at. And yeah, then I, then I was fortunate. Steve left, uh, decided to leave the club after we got back into the Premier League, and and Mick took over, and um, I I just stepped up from the academy then to help Mick in the interim, and ended up staying with Mick and, and until unfortunately um, Mick got the sack, and I left as well then for a few months before coming back. But you know, it's part and parcel of football. You know, you know, you always know that uh, the day you take a job, you're a day closer to losing it, and that's the, that's the way I see football. That's the way I. I've, I've been in football 33 years now, so you know nothing comes as a surprise to me anymore. Marco Silva then left, and the club got back in touch with me. You know, I think it was four months later to, to come back in. And Leonid Slutsky was coming in, the Russian manager, and um, they asked me to come back in and, and be his assistant or his first team coach, which which I did. So Leonid Leonid didn't last long, really. Leonid went uh, just after Christmas. Um, we had a tough period, and then Nigel Atkins came in, and it it was great for me because. Because me and Nige were goalkeepers together at Wigan, so I've kept in touch with Nige, even you know, before he came back into Hull. So me and Nige knew each other. We knew each other a long time ago, and um, we've always been friends. So Nige coming in was was great for me, and uh, 
we had, we had a good couple of years together with Nigel. Mm-hmm. Nigel did, you ever, can't come in. did you ever play against Nigel Atkins? No, I played in the same same squad as him. Obviously, we were both competing for the same shirt. Um, when I went on loan to Wigan, though, all those years previously, when I was at Stockport, Nigel was injured. So that was part of the reason why I went. They, 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 all the keepers were injured. They, and FA Cup, as it is, it's hard to find somebody to come into the FA Cup team. So that's mm-hmm. how I ended up there, really. But uh, never played with Nigel. Nigel left. We had two years together. I Yeah, I had three. Nigel left at the end of my second year. And then he, he went to Bangor from yeah. there. Nigel was, Nigel was doing his physio degree when he was at Wigan. And um, obviously went to Bangor, finished his degree. And then, then he went to Scunthorpe from there then. And you know, the rest is history. And Nigel had a fantastic career. Fair enough. It's uh, it's fascinating listening to all the, the names of, of managers you worked alongside and things. But you've also got quite the eye for spotting young talent uh, in, in your roles as sort of um, heads of coaching and leading academies. But there's one that, that stands out, notably a, a, a young Jared Bowen who you saw at Hereford. Almost ten years ago now, you you brought him up to Hull when you were up there. And I mean, now he's he's an England international. He's he's on match of the day, week in, week out. What are your thoughts? You must be really proud of of not only spotting him and giving him that platform, but, but what he's done so far in his career. You know, Jazz was Jazz was my first apprentice to make a league debut. You know, so you know to to be working with Jazz again now is mad, really. But Jazz. Mm. Came on sub against Middlesbrough. I remember I wasn't there either. We were tri- driving back from an under 18s game. I was listening on the radio and Jazz came on. Jazz and a boy called Casey Thomas both came on. Um, so working with Jazz and 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 the lads I did at Swansea, you know, Ben Davis, Joe Roden, Connor Roberts, um, Joey Allen. When I was goalkeeper coach when Joe was breaking into the team at, at Swansea, you know, seeing seeing those lads do what they've done and have the careers they have, it, you know, it's fantastic. Um Jared, yeah, Jared. I was a bit fortunate with Jared. You know, I, I can't take all the all the uh, all the plaudits for Jay. If I'm honest, it, it was my old manager Peter Beadle at, from Newport. He was Hereford's manager, and he phoned me and said, "Listen, I've got this lad. Um, he's only 16. Hereford were in a bit of a predicament at the time. They were going through a takeover, and they were, they were there was money problems there. And he said, "Listen, I've thrown him in uh, from the youth team into the first team. He's doing okay." If you want to come and see him, but I think you're, t- you're going to be too late. There's too many other clubs down the road with him. Mm. So I said, "Okay, I'll come." I went on that Easter weekend. I think they played Alfred and and um, and they won two one or three two. I can't remember. But Jared scored. Jared scored a, a great goal, a typical Jared Bowen goal, really. So after the game, you know, I met them, Peter and the, the club, and said, "Yeah, listen, we'll definitely be interested." Went back to Hull, managed to convince Jared and his dad to come up to Hull. Um, I, it just couldn't have been a better day, really. You know, where, where the academy was based in Hull, it's out in the out in the countryside, so it is quite. Um, it, his dad did say to me, you know, it, it reminded him of home where it was. Really, it was out in the in, in the farms and in a, in an agricultural college, and the sun was shining. The wind was still because on a normal day the wind blows right <laughs> coolly up there. <laughs> and it was perfect. But I also got Steve Bruce to meet them as well. It was a week before the FA Cup final. So I, I told Steve about this lad and I really thought he was special and, you know, any chance and Steve was brilliant. So me, Jared and his dad took him to the training ground, met Steve and I, I think that clinched it really. Mm. I, I know I, I won't say with the other clubs who you're speaking to, but I don't think you got to meet the first team manager at those clubs, you know, and you know, meeting a Premier League manager of, of Steve's ilk really was, what I think that really did help. I also mm. offered a longer contract than the other, other clubs as well. It was never about money. It was just the length of the contract. I, I think we gave Jared a three and a half year deal straight away, and uh, I think that that played a part as well. But uh, the weather, Steve Bruce, and an extra year on the contract certainly helped. And and wow. Jared, Jared just you know kept improving. He had a bad, He didn't have a great first year. He kept picking up injuries, and then uh, we took him out of the games program for for about six months, which was tough for him. Um, but he bought into it eventually. His dad was good as gold, really saw what we were trying to do. And he just worked one-on-one with the sports science department from like the January to the end of the season. And uh, touch wood, he never really had the, the problems that he was having previously. Again, can't remember him missing a day's training, never mind a game. And because he's a tough lad, Jay, really tough lad. You know, he, dad brought him up, you know, hard working on... on uh, in the farm back home and did all his running and all his stuff in, 
with him and um you know, it's, it paid hard work pays off in the end and Jared has certainly put the hard work in to get where he is now and yeah it, it, it's fantastic it, it's nothing better than seeing somebody you've worked with and nothing better for the academy and the club as a whole to, to see somebody they've worked hard to develop you know to go on and have the careers they've had and, and, that, and that's a lot of boys at Swansea you know they might not be playing in the Premier League but there's a lot of boys at Swansea and at Hull who are playing Championship League One League Two you know Hull have got quite a few lads local boys now in the first team um which, which is which is why why we I went there in the first place you know that hadn't happened for a number of years and that was the aim and and the staff have done a fantastic job and continue to do a great job there in promoting young local youngsters which there's nothing better than having a local lad in your in your first team you know I, I really think that that brings the club together and, and the fans love it and I think that seamlessly uh, brings things closer to home man you know we've we've managed to embed uh, a number of local players well to be fair over the last couple of seasons now it's very much a, a Pembrokeshire wide contingent involved in the squad there's uh, there's nine cup finals I think in front of us now for the for the rest of phase two what are what are your thoughts and after obviously unfortunately not starting with a win at Carnarvon over the weekend going into uh, to, to the next nine games what are your what are your thoughts hopes for the for the coming weeks you know us and the other four, another four teams are all vying for that seventh place. You know, obviously Airbus is out, out of their reach, but mm. you know, you speak to all the other managers: Hugh uh, Fowles at Flint, Taff and Abel and, and Stokesy at Pontypridd. I think everybody is capable of getting that seventh place, and you know, everybody's got one eye on that seventh place. But you've also got to be careful that you don't lose too many games because there's another place that we don't. Nobody wants to fall into. Um, Saturday wasn't great. First half, I thought we were we were we were okay. You know, we had we had um, spells with the ball where where we were good, patient, and kept the ball and created. You know, forces had a good chance. Keepers made a save. Elliot's had a chance. He's, the keeper saved that one. A um, couple of half chances here and there. And I thought first half we were pretty much in control, but then second half, you know, their experience just showed. You know, Gossett and Edwards in midfield. I just thought they they took control of the game and. And we couldn't get a foothold, you know. Concede the the two goals, and then you know it's pretty much game over. Then so put that one to bed now, and 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 look forward to Flint on Saturday. You know, we, if if we if we perform to the level that we know we capable of, then then we'll be fine, um, and we'll compete for that seventh place. But you know, it's one thing we can't be is complacent because um, it soon uh, comes back to bite you, and uh, you know we'll be doing all we can to make sure that we get a positive performance and result on Saturday. Excellent. Well, like we said, it, it starts again this weekend. Home fixture to Flint Town United. 2.30pm kickoff at the Augie Bridge Meadow. The support has been fantastic. I'm sure you'd agree throughout the last, well, the, the, a good number of months now. But particularly that Connors Key game stands out in my mind. It's probably the, the loudest one. So fingers crossed for a, another home crowd uh, that will only be using three sides of the of the ground. For those that uh, have seen on social media, the club have had to... Um, well, stop attenders uh, coming to the ground and sitting in the east stand. So be mindful that uh, anyone who normally sits in the east stand will be unable to this weekend. Anything to say to the fans before the weekend? No, please, please come, please come and support and be as loud as you have been. Yeah, home fans have been uh, support's been great this year. And away, you know, there's a bus going to most games now away from home, and it certainly uh, lifts the boys when it, when they see uh, friendly faces in a crowd, especially when you're going to somewhere like Carnarvon. Um, but the more, the merrier. And home, our home form has been pretty decent this year. You know, it's something that uh, you know we need to need to carry that through. Really, so now in the end of the season, we've got five home cup finals, and we need to get you know as many points out of those five as possible if if we want to achieve what we want to achieve this year. So, the fans have been a big help this season. And a long way that continue, and look forward to seeing them all on Saturday. Awesome, well, thank you very much. I know you're a, you're a busy man down there at the Augie Bridge Meadow this week. Uh, really appreciate it. Good luck for the rest of the season. And roll on Saturday afternoon. Cheers. Thanks, Ray. <laughs>